a Goliath of road transport backing up to unload a small fleet of Davids from overseas. Three-wheeled vehicles that run without gasoline, auto rickshaws or tuk-tuks. A group of Dutch industrial designers want to introduce environmentally friendly electric tuk-tuks to the European market. Unlike traditional Thai tuk-tuks, named after the sound they make, the European version is designed to be easier on the ears and the nose. The team's engineers replaced the old noisy engine with a silent electric motor. The major problem facing them, finding room for the battery. Then we realized uh, this wasn't, the, the, the product wasn't suitable for the Western European market because we couldn't fit enough batteries in it. So therefore we decided to completely redesign the vehicle. We took the biggest battery we could possibly imagine. And from there on we designed the vehicle around that battery. The battery now takes up almost the entire floor. The engineers consciously avoided lithium-ion cells and decided to use classic lead-based varieties instead. We get over 100 kilometers using lead acid. So at this point in time, for our application, lead acid is by far the best option. And of course, it's more practical. There is a recycling infrastructure present. The batteries also boost the three-wheeler stability. This helped the new Dutch design tuk-tuks to master slalom tests and be officially licensed for regular road use. That was two years ago, and they haven't looked back since. Tuk-tuks are also being used in a pilot project in Rotterdam. Since March 2010, tuk-tuks have been part of the public transport network in the Overschie area of the city. Before that starting date, we had to buy electric vehicles. So we uh, searched and, and did all kind of research uh, for electric vehicles who could transport as many people as possible, so three but more, be better, uh, six, and for vehicles who are allowed to drive on the road uh, with passengers, so a chauffeur with uh, passengers. And the only uh, company who uh, was selling these kind of electric vehicles was the tuk, tuk company here in Holland. The three-year project is free of charge to passengers in order to boost public confidence in e-mobility. The long-term goal, of course, is better air quality via zero emissions. Plus, it's fun. You can toot when people come past. You can look out the window and wave. It's great for kids. But how reliable are they? We are the first and the biggest uh, customer of Tuk Tuk uh, factory and uh, we test them. We test them six days per week. They drive about 50, 60 kilometers per day. We charge them here. We have got uh, faster charges. We test that also. Uh, we measure how much electricity goes into the batteries and how many kilometers can you drive the day after. All those things we are developing, measuring and experiencing. So far, it's been pretty smooth running for the electric rickshaws, minor technical glitches aside. But recently, they've seen competition from China. Three wheels good, four wheels better. Did you did the QC on the custom tuk -tuk Together well? with the Thailand-based manufacturers, the engineers from Tuk Tuk Factory are on a constant quest to improve the three-wheeler. It's the only way to survive on the booming market for e-vehicles. If Malay would do it, it would be even more. Adam Rice faces another obstacle in Germany, where he wants to sell tuk-tuks. Electric rickshaws are road legal here, but not licensed to take along commercial passengers. Our vehicles are road legal across the EU. They even pass the moose evasion test, showing that they won't tip over. Our current problem in Germany is with commercial transportation law. That stipulates that motor vehicles have to have four wheels and two axles. He's hoping to get a special permit and get his three-wheelers taxiing passengers around Berlin soon as well.